Good morning, friends, and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on Tuesday, March 31st. It is good to be with you this morning. Good morning, G-Day. Good to see you, holding you in prayer. Um, today, uh, we are going to be looking at uh, a new word. Uh, my name is Cindy Stauffer. Uh, I am the pastor at the United Methodist Church, if you are joining us for the first time, and I'm glad you're here uh, throughout the season of Lent each morning, we have been gathering uh, at 6.30 to um, come together for a word of scripture and devotion, and then uh, a word that we can focus on each day as we walk through our prayer, um, we, as we walk through our day, that we might keep scripture uh, in our hearts and in our minds and in our path. And so, good morning. I'm glad you're here with us. Good morning, Renetta and Siege. Good morning, Kemi and Rosetta and Minda. It is good to have you all here with us uh, this morning. So today's word, uh, G-Day, you will appreciate this as um, someone involved in the finances of the church. Today's word is money. And what does money mean um, when we are looking at God's word and how as Christians, as people of faith, how are we supposed to view money, what is the lens that that Christ calls us to, uh, in in the way that we uh, use the resources, um, in the way that we um, live out our life? Uh, I think money is so central in the world around us. So, as as people of faith, what what role does money play in our lives? Uh, good morning, Andrea. It's good to have you with us, and Michelle. Good morning, Susan. Uh, good morning, Augusta and Betty. Uh, good to see all of you today, this morning, holding you all in prayer. Our word for today is money, and our scripture comes from, uh, once again, it comes from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew uh, chapter 6. And I'm going to be um, beginning in verse 19 and reading all the way to verse 24. Again, the word uh, that we're focus on, focusing on uh, this morning is money. And I'm going to be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, from the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 6, verses 19 through 24. Hear now God's word. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body, so if the eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light in you is darkness, how great is the darkness. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Good morning, Vinette and Moses. It's good to have you here today, holding you in prayer. Good morning, Chensi and Genevieve. I'm glad you're with us today, uh, holding you in prayer. Good morning, Ingrid. I'm glad to see you uh, here with us this morning as well, holding you in prayer. So our word today is money. Um, and uh, what role does, does money play in our faith journey? And we had a long discussion in Bible study last night about um, who, not only who do we serve, but what are the parts of our lives that we are willing to give over to God. Um, and we are called to give our whole lives over to God. But there are things that we, we like to um, keep control of. And... Uh, I think money is definitely one of those things. Um, and there's good reasons for it, but um, I think it is a challenge for us to live in a world uh, consumed by the pursuit of money, uh, 
to then say that that is uh, not the main, our main goal for living. Our main goal is walking in faith. Uh, so let's take a look at what Trevor Hudson has to say. Trevor Hudson's book, um, Pauses for Lent, 40 Words for 40 Days, uh, is a book that we've been looking at throughout the season of Lent. And this is what Trevor says about money. He says, money is a touchy subject, yes even though it plays a massive part in our personal and social lives we find it difficult to talk openly about how our faith relates to our money indeed many of us find ourselves stuck in secret and hidden financial obsessions in contrast to our reticence and reserve jesus talks openly about money and possessions his message conveys two sides. He strongly warns against the spiritual dangers of making money our God. And he also makes it clear that a wise use of our material possessions can enhance our relationship to God. Jesus challenges us to dethrone money as a rival to God. Martin Luther once observed, there are three conversions necessary, the conversion of the heart, the conversion of the mind, and the conversion of the purse. Of these three, the last conversion proves the most difficult. I'm reminded of the story of the young man that comes to Jesus and he's ready to follow. You know, he's 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 ready to to give it all until Jesus asks him to sell all that he has and follow him. And he knows that he can't do that, that, that his money is too precious to him. Um, and so it is really, really hard for him to give that up. And he turns and he remains on the path that he's on. And the challenge with money is that we need money. I mean, we've got to have money so that we can have shelter. We, we need money so that we can buy food to feed our families. Uh, we need money uh, to buy clothing so that we are clothed. Um, I mean, there's so many things that we need money for. And it is, uh, we go to work in order to make money. Um, and so it is uh, central to our lives. But the challenge for us is, is what is our purpose? You know, if our purpose is to store up and have enough money so that I never have to worry. You know, if, uh, again, I'm, I'm thinking of another story that Jesus tells about the man that, that builds a larger storehouse so he can make sure if anything happens, he's gonna be okay. Um, and again, this comes back to, do we trust God with our whole lives? Um, do we trust God with all parts of our lives? Or are there things that we need to, to retain control of? Uh, you know, if we, if we are in a place where we know that God will take care of us, um, then we don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious. Now that doesn't mean that we don't make money. I mean, money is important. And we also have to be wise in what we do with our money. Uh, wise in our sharing also of our resources. Uh, there is, um, you know, there are people in the world that make lots of money and they, they make good choices. I, I know it's hard. It seems like it's hard to find people like that, but there are, there are those who see the resources they have as a way to bring the kingdom, to, to make the world a better place, uh, to care for those that are most forgotten. Um, we don't always have to sell everything we have to follow Jesus, but we have to know who we are following. Are we following God in our walk? Or, we are, are, or are we in the pursuit of something else? Um, do we fully give our lives um, over or are there things that we need to control um, in fear? Um, 
And so in this time when I know the economy is, is up and down and there's a lot of anxiety, you know, people aren't sure what will happen, you know, in the coming months. Uh, people are worried about their retirement accounts. They're worried about whether they're going to uh, be able to, you know, sell their houses in this market. Uh, there's so many concerns that I know are on the hearts and minds of um you know, the people in this community, the people in our church family, uh, I, I understand that. Um, but we are reminded again of just the next, the very next section of Matthew 6 reminds us of this. Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? Is and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns and yet your heavenly father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And that's the message we need to hold on to this morning. Um, I realize the anxiety uh, around our financial situ situation right now in the world and, and especially in our country. Um, but friends, we have a God who will protect and provide. Do we trust in God's provision in our lives? we will walk through this place. We will find a brighter tomorrow. Um, the, the needs that we have uh, will be fulfilled and I know, like I see the way that people are caring for those in most need right now. The outpouring of finances in a time when the financial situation is not good. People are giving money uh, to provide resources for those that are living on the streets. People are dropping off food and supplies um, because they know that the way that we are called to use our resources is to ensure that all of God's kingdom is fed, that all of God's kingdom is cared for. So our prayer practice today is to express your intention to dethrone money and to put God first in your life by blessing someone today with an anonymous monetary gift. Uh, now that is if you are able to. I understand that not everyone's in that place. But if you are able to, uh, what a gift to, to bless someone who's really struggling through this time so that they don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from. What a blessing that would be. Uh, good morning, Myrna and Marilyn. I'm glad to see you both here today. So we're going to enter now into a time of prayer. And um, I am lifting up today all those that are struggling with financial um, insecurity. Uh, those that are worried about whether they're going to be able to make it through this time. I know there are those that have lost their job and um, are really struggling to know whether they're going to have enough to, to stay living where they're living and doing the things that they've been doing. And that's, that's, that's um, anxiety producing. And so today we lift up all of those that are struggling financially through this time, praying um, that they know that God's, God will walk them through this, that God's provision uh, God will provide, God will provide in this time. So let us enter now into a word of prayer. <sighs> Jehovah Jireh, you are our provider. And so we come to you today um, putting our whole lives in your hands. Lord, we trust you. Forgive our, um, our doubts. Forgive the times when we have worked so hard to ensure the future. 
and not turned to you and said, Lord, we place our lives in your hands. In this time, Lord, we know that there are so many in our communities, even on our prayer call this morning, people in our families that are struggling financially, that are worrying about the future, that aren't so sure where the next meal is gonna come from or how they will make it through. And so today, Lord, we ask you to just pour out your peace on them. Uh, help them to know that they're not alone and guide us that we might be your presence, that we might be and offer your provision, that we might remind one another that we are not alone. Guide us in this time so that um, our anxiety will lessen and that our faith will grow. Help us to fully trust in you. You are our God, only you. Help our living to represent that each day. We lift all this up to you, Lord Jesus, and together we pray the prayer that, that you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It was good being with you this morning, friends, praying that your day is full of blessings and that you experience the peace and the joy of Jesus today. Uh, bye friends. Oh, tomorrow's, tomorrow's word is body. Do you not know that the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? A uh, princess shared that with us on Sunday. So, uh, it will be good to see you all tomorrow. Have a blessed day. I will see you soon. Bye friends.